Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about the top five room acoustic mistakes that we see a lot. Get a lot of calls from our room forums and boy, I could almost just tell you that just constantly in the belief systems and the norms and the values of the culture that we're in and the acoustic culture, if you will, it's amazing how these uh, half-truths and hyperboles and exaggeration get filtered into the the genre, so to speak, and uh, regurgitated all the time. It's almost better to say nothing <laughs> than some of the things that I hear, but that's the way it goes. What's the first thing I always see? Trying to do too much, too small of a room. Always the case. The room size, volume, and usage just don't go together. It's like a subwoofer. Can't put a huge subwoofer in a closet. You can't do certain things in certain room sizes. It's just physics, okay? So you can't do it. Too much energy, too small of a room. See it all the time, okay? Getting good sound in a small room is so difficult anyway. If you start out by overusing or overpowering the, the volume of the room with energy, there's no hope really for, for treating the issues because the issues are great to begin with and all you're doing by adding more energy um, is exasperating the problem. So you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Here's another thing people don't think about, but it's really important. Coincidental modes, modes that are within say 160, 163. They're within five cycles of each other Okay, so when they're grouped close to that, based on the dimensions of the room, they exaggerate. Okay, they can produce more sound in that frequency range. They can also go the other way. They can also produce a dip. So we want to stay away from coincidental modes when we're choosing our room size and volume and our usage. We don't have that luxury because it's an existing room. Well, we'll maybe think about changing the dimensions. And we don't have to get out hammers and saws to do that. We can change it with treatment. You know, our treatment's 12, 16 inches deep, a lot of it. So we can actually create a new room inside your room with our treatment and get the appropriate dimensions with the treatment. Perhaps we have to see what we're working with and what we're starting with and what you have. Another issue we see are reflections, reverberation, and intelligibility. People don't understand that the reflections off the wall surfaces are critical to what they hear because that's room sound. And the room is a lot bigger than your gear, a lot bigger than the diameter of your speaker, so to speak. So the bottom line here is you got to take care of those reflections off the wall because we want that straight line. You know, we want that straight line energy from source to our ears, right? That's what we want. Everything else comes from the room. It's going to be room sound. So we got room sound here. We got room sound here. We got direct sound here. This is what we want. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Physics is the law. Everything else is a suggestion. Room sound, room sound, room sound, room sound, direct sound. And that's about how it is. I think we can even add some more floor and ceiling. So we got six room sounds one direct sound. That's kind of the ratio that we have to work with now that I look at it in a diagram. So that's what you're up against. So each wall is part of it, each floor and each ceiling is part of it. What's the big deal about reflections, high reverberation times, speech intelligibility, dialogue for theater, uh, words for, for vo voice and, and vocals. So you have to be able to understand so many words per sentence. 80, 90 percent. If you can't, you're not going to be listening for very long because you can't understand. Churches lose attendance because the reverberation times are too high. With elderly congregation members, it drives us nuts. There's all kinds of physiological reasons for that, especially those of us that are wearing electronic assisted hearing devices. To be very, very careful. We did a church in Alaska 50 members, they had 200 to begin with, down to 50. 
older congregation, they wouldn't come. They couldn't hear. They couldn't understand. So we fixed the reverberation times in the church. Tenants back up to 200. They're looking for a new building. That's how important it can be. Speech intelligibility. Reduce the reflections. Manage the reverberation. Here's another nemesis we always face. Glass surfaces. Within the sound fields. Now, the sound fields, remember, we have front to rear, floor to ceiling, and then Sidewall to sidewall, okay? So we have three sound fields we have to be careful with and critical about. Keep glass out of these sound fields. Now there's a way to put windows in a room. Take a look at this graphic here. You can see that we can put windows. We just got to get them up towards the top of the, the wall, closer to the ceiling. But there's ways to let ambient and natural light in a room. Plenty of ideas. Just keep them. Keep glass out of the sound field. It alters frequency response, has a negative impact on frequency response. We don't want that. Okay, here's the other one we see. Wrong type and amount and position of treatment. Boxes filled with building insulation, trying to get down 30, 40 cycles. Not gonna happen. Wrong material type. How much? They never have enough. Well, let's put it in the corners. All our problems will be over. Axial modes, tangential modes, and oblique modes are all defined as the end result of parallel surfaces, not parallel corners. Once again, the half truth, the industry is perpetuated as a whole truth. Most of the technologies in the marketplace today that go in the corners don't even solve those problems, okay? Get the right type, get the right amount, and put it in the right place. In order to do that, you have to understand what your problem is. Problem, solution, paradigm. Physics is law. Remember, everything else is a suggestion. Top five room acoustic mistakes people make. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.